This is 2018. European Girls Math Olympiad problem number two and here is a view of this problem. We are considering the set A and uh, let me go ahead and rewrite the set A as two. Uh, if you plug in K equals two, you'll get three halves. And if you plug in three, you'll get uh, four thirds and so on, right? So it's a decreasing sequence and in the limit, uh, it will approach uh, one. Uh, something like that. Awesome. So for the first part, uh, we would like to prove that any every positive integer greater than or equal to 2 can be written as the product of one or more elements of A and uh, with repetitions. So if you want. Um, so I, I think it's very straightforward that you will be just using a telescoping argument, for instance, if we are interested in calculating, say, uh, I don't know, 5, for instance, 5 would just be equal to 5 over 4 times 4 over 3, 3 over 2 times uh, 2, right? So all these uh, fractions are elements of A. And so because of this telescoping nature, the 3s cancel, the 4s cancel, so we have 5 equals 5. And it would work for any number, right? So for instance, if our number is x, uh, we can start with x over x minus 1, x minus 1 over x minus 2, all the way up to, uh, say, 3 over 2, and then eventually 2. So the 2s will cancel, the 3s will cancel, the x minus 2s, the x minus 1s, and x will be equal to x. So therefore, uh, a, a more uh, closed form, uh, I mean, if you want to use uh, the product symbol, so for, from i equals uh, from 0 all the way up to uh, x minus 1, uh, we can have the uh, product of these uh, terms 1 over... Uh, 1 over i. Yeah, so obviously 1 plus 1 over... Uh, wait, that's not true. Um, so I want to start at 1 actually, yes. So i equals from 1, I should have said, yes. So if you plug in 1, 1 plus 1 over 1, so 2 times, if you plug in 2, uh, 3 halves and so on. So 2 times 3 halves all the way up to, and if you plug in x minus 1, we'll get 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. Common denominator, x minus 1 plus 1 is just x, x over x minus 1, so that's the first term. And that's pretty straightforward, so the first part is done. Now for the second part, we need to optimize it actually. So rather than, obviously, uh, there are more efficient ways to write 5, so rather than uh, having four different elements from the set A, we could have achieved even even uh, faster. For instance, we could have said 5 over 4. Because repetitions are allowed, um, you might have done 2 times 2. And sure enough, these 2s cancel with the 4, and we, again we have 5. So therefore suggesting that we could have achieved a 5 by just using 3 numbers only. Can we achieve 5 using only um, 2 numbers? That's not going to work, right? Because the largest element in the set A is 2. So 2 times 2. So you can at most reach 4. So uh, we knew from the beginning that uh, we need at least uh, 3. And we, we have shown a way to get 3. So this um, f of x would basically represent how many uh, terms from the, from the set A you need to multiply in order to reach your desired number. So it's pretty straightforward. So we want to show, so now the question, the question is asking to uh, show that there exists infinitely many pairs x, y that would satisfy this condition. So in a sense, the function f is not additive, right? So um, uh, it's kind of, uh, well, not, 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 oh, sorry for that, not, not necessarily additive, I mean, because we have a product here. So basically, um, yeah, so you, you can uh, just test out some numbers, and that's exactly what I did. Uh, so we can, uh, and uh, understanding more the nature of the function f can give us an idea on how to construct uh construct uh, infinitely many pairs x, y that would satisfy this inequality, right? So let's go ahead and uh, make a few calculations. Obviously, f of 2 is equal to 1 because, well, because 2 is equal to 2. f of 3 is equal to, well, uh, because, uh, I claim it's equal to 2 because 3 is equal to 3 halves times 2. The 2s cancel, we have 
Yeah? So f of 4 is equal to, well, obviously this one is a uh, 2 because 2 times 2. Uh, f of 5 is just, well, we just did that, so we, we realized 3 was possible. Um, f of 6, uh, for f of 6, uh, I think, again, we need 3 because, well, obviously 2 is impossible. We need to have at least 3 because uh, if it's 2, 2 times 2, because the largest element here is a 2, right? You can at most achieve 4, so you can never reach to 6. So we need at least 3, and in, indeed it's possible to make it with 3. For instance, you can start with 3 halves times 2 times 2. That's pretty straightforward. So the 2s cancel, 3 times 2 is a 6. So we have used 1, 2, 3 numbers and so on. So I'll keep going until I find something interesting. So f of 7 is, um, well, obviously uh, it has to be at least uh, 3, uh, but uh, 3 is impossible because uh, you can't have 2, 2, 2, obviously, because that would give you an 8. So the, the next best you can do is 2, 2, 1 and a half. This one is one and a half. Uh, four times one and a half is six. You can never achieve seven. So therefore, uh, three is impossible. So we need to have at least four. And indeed, you can do it with four uh, uh, simply because, I think four, right? So because seven is equal to seven over six. But then for six, we already constructed it. So three halves times two times two. The twos cancel, the two and the three. So the six cancels. So seven is equal to seven. And we have used only one, two, three, four. All right, so f of 8 is easy. That's just 3, 2 times 2 times 2. Uh, f of 9, um, well, the best we can do is, obviously, 3 is impossible. The best we can do is a 4. Is 4 possible? Yes, because 9 is simply equal to 9 over 8. Uh, it kind of reminds us what we did here, right? So uh, times 2 times 2 times 2. Aha! So the 2's cancel, the 8, and so we have 9 equals 9, and indeed we have used 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. But this also gives us a very good idea, right? So, so far we already know that f uh, of 2 to the k is simply equal to k, right? But then for the next guy as well, f of 2 to the k plus 1, that one is possible with k plus 1 only, uh, simply because um, 2 to the k plus 1 Oh, sorry, 2 to the k plus 1 is equal to 2 to the uh, k plus 1 divided by 2 to the k. Obviously, this is part of the set A. Uh, it's 1 plus 1 over 2 to the k, which is one of the elements here, times, and now you have a bunch of 2s. You have k2s, k of them, k of these, k of these. And so the 2s will cancel with the 2 to the k, and as a result you get this. So therefore, in total, we have used 1 plus k. Um, so we have used k plus 1 terms, and that's it. That's pretty neat. Um, and if you wish, uh, le let me do two more, and then I'll stop it there. So f of 10, obviously we need at least, uh, well, we have to have more than 3, right? So because uh, 8 is maximum if you have 3 only. So we should have at least 4. Um, so f of 10 better be greater than or equal to 4, and uh, is, um, well actually yeah, it's a 4 is attainable because 10 is simply, uh, you can write it as 5 over 4 times 2 times 2 times 2, right? So therefore it is really 4. Uh, so this thing is actually 4. Well, 3 is impossible like we said. And finally let me show you also 11. Um, well, for 11, uh, obviously 3 is impossible, like usual, because that's for 8 at most. Is 4 possible? So for 11, uh, 11 has actually uh, is a good exercise, so let's go ahead and uh, spend a little bit time on 11. So obviously uh, f of 11 has got to be greater than or equal to 4. And with simple inspection, you can easily get 5 pretty quickly, so 11 uh, over 10. That's one of, and then for 10, you can just write these, right? So 5 over 4 times 2 times 2 times 2. So 5 is definitely possible, but is 4 possible? So one way to do it is to bound 11, right? So um, let, me, let me try to bound it. So if you want to achieve 11 uh, using, uh, uh, using only 4 numbers, uh, well, one idea is obviously you can't use 2, 2, 2, 2. Uh, four twos in a row is impossible. So you can use three twos in a row times y, implying that y would be equal to 11 over uh, 
11 over 8, but that's not a fraction from our list A, right? So it's not part of A, so that's not going to work. Uh, no, or let's just say no instead. No, or actually without, instead of saying no, this is not an element in A. Well, alternatively, what if we can use two twos followed by two members from the set A? Well, which are non-zero, uh, uh, y and z are not equal to 2. Uh, so that would imply y times z is equal to 11 over 4, which is equal to 2.75. And I claim that this is also not possible, because if y and z are not equal to 2, then the most that they can get is 1 and a half, and 1 and a half squared is 2.25. Even then, you cannot catch it to this one. So therefore, um, again, uh, this would imply um, impossible impossible okay how about one two only 11 that's even worse right y times z times w this would imply y times z times w is equal to 11 over 2 out of question because each of these are not equal to 2 so they are at most one and a half one and a half cubed is three half cubed which is 27 over 8 and that's definitely uh, less than so this so therefore this is also impossible and obviously the case where all four are different than two is out of the question it's one half raised to the fourth power which is three halves uh, to the fourth power 81 over uh, 16 again that's roughly uh, uh, roughly five and it is definitely less than 11 so no doubt uh, four is impossible to achieve so therefore we can revise so based on this and based on these observations combining these two we get that f of 11 is is actually a 5 and because it is a 5 um well uh, i can uh, think of well we the first thing that comes to mind is let's make use of this power trick right so this was so cool, right? So it was so efficient to calculate this one in just k plus one thing, right? So you can start with f of uh, so f of um, f of uh, how about nine? Um, f of nine is no, this is equality. Yeah, uh, f of nine won't work. So three times three, so two plus two is and so f of seventeen. Uh, that's equal to a four, a five, uh, but seventeen is not. Uh, I cannot factor it, right? So skip 17. So next one would be 33. Oh yeah. So 33 is a good number. Uh, so because uh, so all I will need is to calculate f of 33. But this is obviously by by our pattern here. We know that it's 32 plus one. So 32 to the five. We need five twos, and then we need an extra one. So we need six. We can definitely achieve six by just using this uh, this thing here. But then uh, look at f of three. F of three is just a two. And f of 11, we just proved it. It's a 5. So therefore, we have found a first example here, right? So we have found that f of 33, which is simply equal to 6, is strictly less than f of uh, 3 plus uh, f of uh, 11. And f of 3 here being a 2 here. And this guy being a 5. So this whole total is a 7. So perfect so we have our first one at least we know that this set is non empty but we want to construct now infinitely many and so the idea is just to exploit this this base case of uh, where we use the 3 and the 11 and uh, to generalize this so uh, i claim so claim claim obviously if you check aops community page you will see quite a few constructions so that's uh, good news so there's so many different ways to to, to to have a construction on this one but i claim that if uh, the two numbers so here in this example um uh, so we need to construct the x's and the y's if i let x be uh three times two to the n in the spirit of the 3 and the 11 that we just have accomplished and uh, y be 11 so then i claim that this will do the trick so all i will need for that is to first compute um well i i will need to compute f of uh, 11 times uh, 3 times 2 to the n which is just f of uh, 33 times 2 to the n and uh, well, that is equal to what? Uh, well, uh, f of 33 times 2 to the n. Uh, I know how to handle this part. For this part, I need uh, n2s. 
and for this part i need well it has at least 32 so which is five is won't be enough but then for 33 six would be enough right so just using the pattern that i we have just developed uh just for the record uh, let, let me write this down if you will uh, because 33 is just uh 33 over 32 times 2 to the 5 right so they basically cancel each other so we have five more of them here one more so we have six of them so this one is six plus n so this is n plus six actually and all i need now is to calculate them separately but f of 11 we already did it f of 11 we just proved that it was a five so all that's left is f of 3 times 2 to the n, but pretty much by the same idea. Uh, so for 2 to the n, uh, we know that we will need uh, n of them, n 2s. Uh, n plus 1, 2 won't be enough because that would give at most 2 to the power n plus 1, and this is obviously more than that. So therefore I need at least n plus 2 of them, and this is definitely achievable simply, so this is definitely achievable, n plus 2, simply because uh, we can use the following. So 3 halves times 2, and then times two, uh, well, how many twos here? N twos. And, and then we have two more terms here, so N plus two, basically. That's pretty decent, right? The twos cancel, and then we have three times two to the N. Yeah, 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 yeah. N plus two. Whew. Okay, so now, finally, let's combine them together. So, uh, for these uh, pairs, uh, all we did is to calculate first uh, F of XY, uh, which is just F of uh, this number. Uh, 33 times 2 to the n obviously we calculated it to be n plus 6 and n plus 6 is definitely less than uh, less than what uh, n plus 7 where did I got that I got it as a sum of n plus 2 and 5 here n plus 2 and 5 where uh, n plus 2 is simply f of 3 times 2 to the n and 5 is just 11 right so f of 11 and that's just f of x plus f of y. Whew. Okay, so uh, this was a very nice exercise uh, about bounding, uh, creating lower and upper bounds. But the main idea was uh, to bound uh, uh, these numbers, 2 to the k plus 1. Well, the main idea of this proof that I suggested. Uh, like I said, there are so many different ways to establish that. But this was a very clear, simple uh, pattern observation and then uh, bounding. Uh, we would realize that for 2 to the k plus 1, uh, obviously k2s won't be enough, uh, but uh, k plus 1 terms is enough just simply because of this trick. Uh, so now uh, to conclude, uh, we just realized that uh, this would work for any uh, positive value of n, right? So it would work for any value of n for all n starting from 0, even if for 0 it will work, right? Because 3 and 11 we confirmed it for 1, 2, 3, so for any... Uh, integers non-negative integers n we will get a new uh, pair xy which would satisfy this desired strict inequality and uh, we're pretty much done with this problem so that was that has been a very neat problem uh, hope you enjoyed it and looking forward to see you guys in our next lecture